trying to figure out how low I have to hunch myself down here. <laughs> good evening, good evening, good evening, folks. Welcome to another episode of Spilly Tea. I'm your host, Tiffany Daniels. You know, hand thing. And we are going to that horrible world known as the JRC. But before we do the usual disclaimers, I was going to try to push through all five of these tonight. But obviously that's not going to happen. I'm exhausted and I just had to look at the TL between now and then. Why do I do this to myself? Coming for Britney Spears again. She should be put back in the conservatorship. Because she spins, Karen. You mad because she spins on camera? <sighs> Maybe that's not your cup of tea. But it's by far not the stupidest, strangest, weirdest, or batshit insane thing that any of us have seen on TikTok or YouTube. Let's talk Tide Pod Challenge here. Let's talk Benadryl Challenge. Let's talk all the stupid crap that people have done online for clicks and clout. And YouTube fame, because let's face it, that's the only kind of fame the majority of you are ever going to get. I don't say this to be mean. It's not fun. Even being semi-well-known is not fun. I could do without well, dealing with fanboys. I'm, I'm just saying they always make it weird. I have never had a situation where it wasn't weird when they come to my door. Besides the point... Y'all are shaming her, saying she needs to be put back in the conservatorship in all this same ableist bull. You've been shilling about her since literally the girl got started. Now, I'm talking as a metalhead here. I hated her music with my whole soul. My whole soul. You don't know. You really don't know. That being said, though. As a person who's not a fan, watching you all dogpile on her, doing the same crap that got her locked in that hellscape of a conservatorship in the first place, I might add. I see you. Okay? Same people judging her now are the same dumbasses who did the Benadryl and did the Tide Pod Challenge and all the other stuff. Stupid, trendy things that you did to get clout. I saw the videos, unfortunately. They are now scarred into my psyche. Thank you for the nightmare fuel. She spins on camera. Obviously, she's mentally disturbed and barely clad. Half the crap you watch on TV has women barely clad dancing. Okay? The only difference between what she posts and what you see on the TV is editing. Filters, right? Now, am I going to sit here and tell you that there's not some issues she has to work through? No, it's called PTSD for a reason. And guess what, folks? I hate to say it, but as someone who's had it, I can tell you it's a lifelong thing. I did not have to overcome an addiction that was forced upon me by my own family the way she did. Do you know what lithium can do to you? If, especially if it is a drug that you don't even need and it is being forced on you to force you to be docile. Do you know what ingestion of lithium for over a decade can do to you, to your mental health, to your psyche. You are shaming someone who's trying to overcome horrific abuse, exploitation, you know she has PTSD, 
She's also forced to overcome an addiction that she didn't choose for herself. She didn't choose to take lithium, folks. That was forced on her. She's in recovery. Show some respect. I say this as someone who has an uncle I never got to meet. Who to this day, his murderer has never been caught. Who was addicted. When you shame someone recovering from drugs, period, period. Your type of nasty behavior is this crap that sends them straight back into the arms of the drugs. Because what's even the point then? Yeah, think on it. To the disclaimers, in the description box, you're going to find the link to the article that the Judge Rotenberg Center doesn't want you to read. It's written by Neuroclastic, a small non-for-profit started by autistics for autistics, wherein they interviewed and surveyed over 900 ABA professionals in regards to the JRC's so-called behavior modification program. Matter of fact, JRC doesn't want you to read this article so much, they have threatened Neuroclastic with a defamation lawsuit if they did not remove it from the website. Well, folks, Neuroclastic has refused, so you know the drill. Please read that article and share it on all your social media. Also included in there is Neuroclastic's public statement regards to the defamation lawsuit threat, as well as a link to their GoFundMe. We are crowdfunding, folks, in case the JRC actually sees through with their threat. Also included in there, the Ozarks first article in regards to the Agape Boarding School, now known as Stone for Help Boarding School, a Christian-themed boarding school based out of Stockton, Missouri, that takes in so-called troubled male teens, that has in pending over 21 civil lawsuits, claims, and allegations leveled against it, all of them which have been substantiated by the Missouri Department of Social Services, and they include the following, sodomy, rape, sexual assault, Child abuse, psychological and emotional abuse, child trafficking, starvation, and folks, that's just for starters. You have one former staff member arrested by the FBI, another, a doctor who still lives on the premises with full access to the boys up on multiple, again, substantiated claims of sodomy, rape, and sexual assault of the boys there. You have an attorney general too busy chasing after drag queens and trying and failing to defund public libraries to actually do his job. And our governor's office nuts. So please send help. Share that article on all your social media. We got the other pertinent links to the Stop the Shocks campaign as well, including Autistic Hoya's massive archive on the subject. Jennifer Masaba's behavioral shoot of shockable offenses. A clip out of the seven-hour ordeal undergone by Andre McCollins back in 2002. The templates and the ever-present self-explanatory change.org shut the Judge Rotenberg Center down petition. When we discuss the JRC, you're going to hear vivid descriptions of and catch clips of surveillance footage of people with disabilities being tortured and abused. If you got young children present, folks, please use your headphones, all right? All right, trigger warning, this channel is marked not for children for a reason. We use profanity on occasion and we speak on dark subjects. If your child is 16 and younger, they're watching this. Very obviously, parental supervision is advised, all right? Now, folks, I'm exhausted. Mm, yeah, angry. I, 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 I need to drink my calming tea. I need to drink a lot of my calming tea. I like probably three or four mugs to calm me down. So this video is going to be hopefully short and sweet. We never know with me, right? Also, if you hear me clear my throat or make any weird noises, I am suffering from Missouri allergies, so your understanding would be appreciated, all right? Okay, where we left off. Baseline evaluation of Blah. And monitoring of behavior support. Baseline data are conducted to determine the operant level of a target behavior, that is, the natural occurrence of the behavior before intervention, and provides a level of behavior against which the results of the intervention procedure can be compared. Alboro and Troutman, 1999. The proposed behavior modification treatment plan states, that during X's first two weeks on baseline period at JRC, 
All her behaviors were ignored and no man's demands were placed on her. Page 5. Ignoring Blink's problem behaviors may have created an extinction condition. There are two expected outcomes of behavior when the behavior is put on extinction. An increase in the rate and or, give me a moment here, intensity of the behavior. And two, extinction-induced aggression, increase in aggression. Alberto and Troutman, 1999. Especially when you refuse to learn the function of the behavior, what's the triggering it, you know. It is likely that the staff created an extinction condition when they ignored X during baseline. The result would then be an increase in rate and intensity of the behavior and increase in aggression. This baseline condition would create an artificial inflated rate of behavior. Oh, shocker! Let's think about this. If they're recording no behaviors for that entire first week, and then they started recording them all, that would look like an escalation, wouldn't it? Yeah. This baseline condition would then create an artificially inflated rate of behavior. And this rate of behavior would be the level of behavior against which the results of the subsequent interventions would be compared. Start out with false data. You'll get nothing but false data. Should go without saying, right? Thus, the baseline condition may not have been reflective of X's behavior under more standard baseline conditions. Natural occurrence of the behavior. Data collection is the backbone of applied behavior analysis. And I hate to say it, it's also data collection is the backbone of just behavior. You know what I'm going to say here, right? Functional assessments, it's their backbone too. ABA has a myriad of its own problems. But they are at least saying one thing, and in that it is data collection for when that a functional assessment is going on. It's not just about the behaviors. When you focus on one area, <sighs> one person of the collecting data is to determine the effects of a particular intervention to enable the behavior analyst to make decisions and modifications during the course of the intervention rather than waiting for weeks or months. Alberto Troutman, 1999. Think about it. So if you are gathering data the way you're supposed to from day one, that gives you access to the information that you need to be able to tweak the individual's plan. This is something that is also used in person-centered planning. They do mark those changes. They just treat it differently than ABA. They will point those things out, where my improvements were, where they weren't. What did I think those triggers were? They would then present different solutions, different ways to work on what is triggering the particular behavior that wasn't so great at the time in order that I may then with them adjust the plan accordingly so I could make sure that it was actually fitting me where I was functioning at the time. Where am I now? Where do I need to be? How do I get there? For those things that are still cropping up, what's still causing them? Is what we did not working? Okay, what's something else we can try? When you're acting off of faulty data, you cannot adjust the treatment plan to the individual. If the treatment plan never evolves along with that of the consumer, There's going to be no change. The JRC doesn't do this for very obvious reasons. To keep them strapped on those machines. The things that you have to do to get yourself off of those machines is basically act like Matthew Israel's fantasy of what normal is. Without realizing, normal is the fantasy. 
again, I want to pontificate on this one thing. Normal is the fantasy. The reality is everybody is trigger warning. I'm going to curse. Every last one of us is fucked in the head in our own different, unique ways. So forcing us to essentially conform to this romanticized ideal that doesn't exist anywhere outside these people's heads does no one any good. Particularly when you're cooking the data. But let's keep moving, shall we? For example, it appears 15 months elapsed without a decrease in aggressive behavior. No program changes are indicated on the chart through these 15 months. It was not evolving with the consumer. It's got to evolve. You have to take in consideration, even daily, the different things that are changing, the different things that are working, what we can pull back off of, what we need a little more of, it's got to evolve literally daily. This is why direct care staff is extremely important. And this is why direct care staff needs to be properly trained when dealing with mental health and people with neurological disabilities. Don't get me started. I will dust off my soapbox and I will not shut up for the next five hours. This obvious inappropriate length to wait make before making a change. Behavior analysts must attempt to determine why a behavior is not descending and make a program modifications based on their analysis of the data. Exactly what I just said, but with... God, I wanted to call it fancy talk. I'm really am brain dead tonight, folks. I'm sorry about that. Inappropriate to wait too long before changing an ineffective program. It cannot be an effective program if the program never evolves. It can also never be an effective program when the data is crap from the beginning. When you in a race in a whole week and all of a sudden there's escalation because before then you were not recording any of the behaviors, Dr. Israel, that literally defeats your whole argument. I think he does it, and particular students that he targets, like he targets going after poor communities of color, for example, to get his students. I think he does this because he's using it as a justification for his insanity. Because remember, he has to get court approval, guys, before he puts them on these kinds of restrictive plans. Remember that, right? What better way to get the judge to side with him than to show out of nowhere suddenly a spike of over 20,000 behaviors? We all know it's not 20,000. We all know Dr. Israel calls standing up without permission a behavior. But you see where I'm going with here. We're going to close out on that. We don't get very many views on this channel. The few that we do get do tend to get removed from time to time. Folks, please don't forget to hit the like button. Hit subscribe. Don't forget to hit the comments. I do appreciate your time. As always, we hope you have a good one. If you got some time. Please go on YouTube, type in Ill Will Press, pull up FOME, especially when you have evenings like mine when you're just done. It will cheer you up. It will definitely cheer you up. We will see you all next time. Bye-bye, everyone.